What is going on guys, Lord Valor here and welcome back to another video. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm joined by Kayla. Kayla, how are we doing this, this morning, I guess? I'm doing okay. I'm waking up a little more now, so good for that. <laughs> yeah, yep. It's, it's kind of interesting that we're doing it in the morning. Normally this stuff is done at night, in the evenings. Um, so yeah, this is, this is going to be pretty, pretty, pretty fun. <laughs> pretty fun to figure out what we're what we're doing today so if you read if you read the uh title and clicked because you definitely thought this was going to be weird you're right because it's definitely going to be weird so kayla has constructed a list of WikiHow articles and we are going to read through them critique them laugh critique them laugh at them i don't know some of them are going to be serious some of them aren't so just stick with it and uh, you're going to kind of get a little bit of everything, so. Yeah, so the first one that I came up with, just to kind of start us off, because it's probably going to be really weird, is how to flirt. How to flirt. Yeah, and it's just kind of in general, not like guys or girl related, it's just kind of in general. So. In general, yes. So let's just read, okay, do you want to read the intro for, for us, just kind of set the stage of what this is? Sure. Okay, how to flirt. Flirting at its most base, basic is playfully showing you are romantically attracted to someone. If you are ready to flirt with someone, you should already know you are sexually attracted to them. <laughs> <and like them. laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Oh, they I jumped think. the gun there from like... <laughs> <laughs> you should already know that you are sexually attracted to them. Like, mm. uh, Okay, and then continuing <laughs> on. It might seem nerve-wracking to start flirting and put yourself out there, but fear not. It's normal to be nervous around someone you really like. Wow. And, there are and there are ways to seem confident and pull off a successful flirtation. Whether you're flirting online or in person, it's important to keep a balance between revealing your feelings and keeping the person you like intrigued. If you want to know how to flirt and you'd like some help getting to know someone, this article gives some general advice. Nice. Wonderful. So, method one, flirting in person. Make eye contact. So, basically, what they're getting at here is have a normal conversation. I was gonna say, what? E I was gonna say, even if you're not necessarily like talking to your crush, just it's a good conversation to tip is to just make eye contact with someone. Again, number two, smile. If you are not smiling when you're talking to people, that's probably not a great sign mm -hmm. the last part of the smile says try smiling with your eyes not just your mouth make your whole face light up when you smile uh you know what with masks the only thing that smiles now is my eyes i i cannot physically smile with my mouth anymore i um. can't <laughs> it's a struggle start okay. talking what no <laughs> never don't start talking no premarital no. talking that's a what? sin. It's, it's a sin at its finest. What? <laughs> Introduce yourself or maintain the mystery. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's the first Excuse word. So, like, you go up to someone to start flirting with them, but you don't give them your name? What type of method is that? Excuse me. I, hmm. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I want to know the person I'm talking to. If the person you are interested in another language likes, like, it, it speaks in another language like Spanish, pick up a few words of the language before you strike a conversation. That's actually legitimately, even if you're not, like, interested in them, like, you don't necessarily have a crush on them, like, even if you're just, you want to get to know them, that's actually a really good tip, is if they can speak Spanish, or they know how to speak Spanish, like, talk to them in spanish don't just talk to them in english yeah that's yeah most of this is just basic conversation advice <laughs> like Honestly, yeah. initiate a conversation that's basically the same thing as number three mm -hmm. you, that i don't see why those have to be two separate points but 
<laughs> okay. Right. Keep it light. Ah, yes. I love talking about my crippling depression or something. You know, like, why would you bring that up? That just doesn't yeah. make sense. <laughs> yeah, why would you bring that up? Especially, like, if you're just getting to know the person or something. Like, why would you bring that up? So so what's new with your life? Oh, yeah, dude, I'm just just going to therapy. Like, you, did, you don't start off with that. Not you don't a good start idea. Off with that. Yeah, you don't start off with that. Not a good idea. So that's just pretty basic stuff right there. Yeah. What's number six? Use body language to communicate your intentions. Like... See, my favorite part of this one is break the touch barrier and play mm-hmm. with your hair. The like, uh. I think up earlier, um, it said to bat your eyes or something yeah, the girls said the, the girls were supposed to bat their eyes and now they're yeah. supposed to uh, play with their hair so we're going fully stereotypical anime girl here like yeah. look through the eyelashes blink a lot and play with the hair yeah. like and it's it says uh you almost want him or her to know you're nervous because it means you're interested okay mm. like that makes that makes sense it's I just guess... I, I i understand that I guess. I mean, but okay. I I have more problem with the blinking and the looking through the eyelashes and like yeah. that's just that's just weird. Me too. <laughs> I think that's weird. And okay, then number number seven yeah, is just like number six. Breaking the touch barrier. <laughs> yeah, and they they mentioned that in number six, so like whatever. Yeah. Number eight. <laughs> Compliment the other person early in the conversation. Here's the other... So, they say to compliment the eyes, the smile, the lips, the hair, the hands. One, what is there about hands that you're going to compliment besides the fact that they're soft? Yeah. And you're probably that's... not holding hands if you've just met. So, like, it's don't true, understand yeah. that one. Hair, I get. Like, mm-hmm. if they dyed their hair, maybe. Or even if you like the color of their hair, you can just, like, say that. Like, yeah. that's, that's pretty simple. Lips? I feel like that could be taken the wrong way. Like, dude, your ruby led yeah. lips are, like, so hot. Or, like, mm. uh, Yeah. No. Maybe, I, maybe I'm maybe i overreacting on that one. But that one just seems like no. either, like, you're suggesting, you're, like, hinting at something. They could take that the wrong way. Right. Like, I, I just don't see lips as, like, a good thing to compliment someone on. I was going to say, speaking as a girl, I would not like if a guy started complimenting my lips right at the get-go like smile and eyes i completely understand those but i would save smile i would not do simply because that feels like more of a later thing eyes Mm -hmm. i feel like that can create conversation like if you like the color of the person's eyes like that that i understand yeah i don't know i feel like that's those are 50 50 eyes and hair i understand the rest of them i just kind of meh don't really get yeah Keep your interaction short and sweet. Five to ten minutes. Okay, that's... I guess that's... Mm-hmm. I, I guess it just depends on how well you know the person, right? Right, yeah. Because if... I guess if, you know, if you've known this person for a while, um, the conversation can pro- is probably going to go on for more like 20 minutes to even a half an hour, 45 minutes, just depending what you're doing or that kind of thing. Yeah. That, that makes sense. And then number yeah. 10, close the deal. So they're already <laughs> assuming that you're going to ask this person out on a date. Uh, I don't like that. So, like, I flirted with you for 5, 10 minutes. You want to go get dinner? <laughs> like... See, okay, well, I could see not necessarily closing the deal with a date, but I could see where you would ask for the person's number or Snapchat or something like that. Imagine, like the... imagine being asked for your Snapchat. <laughs> That's me all the time. I get asked for my Snapchat now. Not even my number. That's how I communicate with people is Snapchat. That's yeah. Like, can I be Snap? Like, mm. okay. Well, I'm not gonna go on that rant. <laughs> <laughs> are we gonna do method two or do you wanna? Um, method two. Are there how many methods are there? There's only two, so we'll just go through this one quickly. It's right. it seems pretty basic. Flirting by texting or cheating. Chatting. Chatting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how how do I flirt? 
and like not cheat on my girlfriend, WikiHow? Can you like explain that to me, please? <laughs> mm, okay, okay, we don't know. <laughs> okay, okay flirting one. by texting or chatting, not okay. Yep. Number one. Keep your approach casual. Um. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Did you see blank? Um, I, mean, I don't like that sentence the way. I, <laughs> did you see? I don't like. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't like. The, I don't like the questions they have there. But I mean. How's it going? I, is pretty. That one's good. Or how's your week going? Is fine. I don't like that middle one though. <laughs> well, I guess I mean. If it was it depends on the context. Person. Did you see yeah. the game last night? Or yeah. Yeah. Like that's I definitely have started a conversation like that. Not not even with people like like just like creating conversation. Yeah. Step two, don't talk about yourself too much. See, if they're both if if you're <laughs> if you're both trying not to talk about yourself, then <laughs> Yeah. I mean I guess well, okay. Here's the thing. You gotta ask questions. Just ask somebody, like, you gotta ask them questions, like, ask them, like, what, I, I don't even know, like, what do you do, like, what it says, like, what do you do with your free time, or, like, what are you doing right now, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely, I get the point, it's just, if you're both trying to do that, then the conversation is not gonna go yeah, much. that's true, that's true. Number three, no one to press for more information. So, are they talking about, like, you can keep the discussion lively and interesting without prob- probing too deeply on personal topics. For Dad. instance, ask your crush whether he or she likes running cross-country would be a great idea, and ask him for more de- asking him for more details about family relationships or close friendships would be too much too soon. Yeah. So that's, okay, so that's what they're talking about. So, like, you can probe about weird topics, like, if they like cross-country, just don't probe about, like, personal stuff. Right. I mean, I guess I could see, like, if the two of you have a close friend or something, you could talk about them or something like that. Yeah. Like, if you have a mutual friend or something like that. Um... (laughs) I love that first sentence. Are you planning on spending all night online, or do you you have more excitement? Mm. Exciting plans for this evening. It it sounds like a mother. Are you really going to spend all night online? Because, like, you should do something. (laughs) Or even the next one. Are you going to kick some butt in tonight's game? Ah, yes. My favorite pastime is kicking people's butts. Um... (laughs) (laughs) I've noticed the cute kitten in your profile. That's like almost like a diss, dude. That That's so. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, dude, do you have no that. friends? Do you spend all the time with a cat? Dude, it's so lame. Mm, I don't like that. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm exaggerating a lot of these, but. Yeah, but it's anyway. Okay, number four. Compliment your cr- crush early in the conversation. <laughs> about what? <laughs> what are you gonna compliment? <laughs> like, what are you gonna compliment? I mean, I can understand if you're complimenting via Snapchat, but if you're texting this person, well, it does say say something like "It's so easy to talk to you" or that kind of thing. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That yeah, that does make sense. Be bold. I. Mm. Mm, that's almost like the last one too, kind of. What? Yeah, I hope you. I hope you know you're gorgeous, beautiful, amazing, my favorite person to talk to. Wow, that that seems a little bit too much, but... That seems a little bit too much. Sorry if this is too forward, but you are incredible. Mm. Yeah, that seems a little too much too soon, but whatever. Okay, I'm just looking at the next step. These two contradict each other. Yeah, don't come on too strong. strong. I, I feel like those quotes were definitely too strong. Yeah, they definitely were, but that's just 
me. I don't know. <laughs> the face on this this wiki. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Ooh, she's well, just like I mean, grossed out. <laughs> well, okay. I guess there is a point of trying to be bold, but you don't want to put like you don't want to compliment them with too much. Like you want to like right away specifically. You don't want to specifically. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like this next one. <laughs> convince your crust to pursue you instead of doing the work yourself uh, so like inception that. you're supposed to like incept their mind into like having the crush on you <laughs> i hate that excuse me i'm sorry but Ugh, i hate that if you're belle Cause... delphi you're just like hey i have a very large dildo collection like that <laughs> that's the way to convince your crust to pursue you you probably oh, didn't understand that that's joke. That's exactly but. the way to do it. That's exactly the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I really liked your eyes. They're so pretty. On the surface, this compliment may seem fine, and it probably would be appreciated. However, a common flaw in the phrasing a romantic compliment is to consistently f- use the words, I like Seth's love, insert trait here, they tell the person that they've succeeded in winning your heart. This is great if you've already built up a solid relationship, but early it can make you seem too easy. That actually makes a lot that, of that, sense. Yeah. This, Maybe this we should one, be... Re- like, this, this is the one instance where Wiki How is, like, actually spot on. <laughs> Maybe we should actually be reading more of the description. It's just being... Yeah, just m- making fun of it by the first sentence. So what's yeah, number eight? Anyway. Um, okay, step eight, tease gently. Um, winky emojis, always a sin. Never use them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then I've been sinning because I use them all the time. <laughs> always leave your crush wanting more. <laughs> That phrase, yes. Mm, I don't like that. <laughs> and the way she's like biting her lip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and his smile is just. <laughs> They're both like. Huh. Wiki, how? What are you oh, doing, man? What are you doing here? Okay. What's number ten? Uh, it's the last step. Don't take it too seriously. Flirting can help you meet new people, feel more comfortable, and learn to mingle. You don't need to put any pressure on yourself to make it mean something or to be perfect. Wow. That, that kind of contradicts a little bit of what they just said in all the steps above. It's almost like they want you to take it seriously, and then step 10 is, step 10 is like, oh, don't take it too seriously. Like, just have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just have fun flirting with your girlfriend, dude. Like, if it's a chore, you don't really love them. (laughs) Okay. So, how would you rank this article, Kayla? What Out of ten, one to ten, how would you rank this article? Ten being high? Yeah. I would honestly rate it probably a five. Yeah, I was thinking the same. Just because they had some good stuff in there of, like... Yeah, they had some good stuff in there, but then some of it was just like, that's just either too much or like too strong. I don't know. That's just me. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I I was gonna give it a four or five as well because there was some and, there was some pretty good pretty good tips. Yeah. But if you read too far into those tips, I think they would have gone been too much. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next one, which is how to sit. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, if you if people don't know how to sit... <laughs> Some like, Half of these are just co-expert, expert co-authored on how to sit. Seriously. <laughs> you're looking at the one that's like how to sit 12 pictures or 12 steps with pictures, right? Yeah. Okay. So... Part one. Do you want me to read the intro again? Uh, yes, please. Okay, so it says, Recent studies by the World Health Organization and the Archives of Internal Medicine suggest that workers who sit for long periods of time, as many, si- as, many as six hours a day, are 40% more likely of dying at any given point. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, this just in. Sitting. 
kills you. <laughs> I guess, oh, okay, I mean, in middle school, that's probably why we felt like we were dying, or in middle school and high school, that's probably why we felt like we were dying half the time. We <laughs> yes, <laughs> we it's, it's the legend is true. Days. The legend is true. All right, you may continue. Um, uh, 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 more likely to die <laughs> at any given point, a variety of afflictions and diseases than people who sit less. While you can't avoid sitting in the office environment, learning how to sit properly whenever you're sitting can help keep you healthy and safe. So I guess this is more about okay. sitting properly. Than yeah, they sitting. should change the title on how to sit properly, not how how to sit. <laughs> like, bend your knees. Put your ass on the grass. <laughs> there you go. Good, good, Jonah. Wait a, there you go. <laughs> you, can write, Literally, you can write a wiki house. Uh, uh, my wiki, that. I should make a website that's like wiki house simplified. And just like, there it's just go. like two sentences. Put your ass on the grass or put your ass anywhere and you're sitting. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. All right. What's part one? Push your hips, mm, hips, as far back as they can go in the chair. I mean, I guess it's true. Like, cause if you like, if you if you push your butt far back far enough, you're gonna automatically your back will be sitting up straighter. Yeah, they're not telling you not to use the backrest, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Because in in like choirs, you're not supposed to use the backrest when you're sitting down and singing. Yeah, but then in the B, in the BJ Han, I just sit with my butt on the back of the pew, and then my back is already yeah. like from the pew. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. step two: keep your shoulders back and your back straight. I mean, I guess yeah. That yeah, these are actually pretty shoulders good. Shoulders back and back straight. Oh yeah, the shoulders back thing is probably the hardest, especially if you're like typing. Yeah, you want to slouch over. Yeah, you kind of want to just hunch over the computer, which is, I feel like everybody does that. Yes. Um, adjust the seat height to fit your body. Not all chairs oh. have that ability, but I, I see that with it. I can, from. yeah, I can see that. Adjust the back of the chair to a 100 degree to 110 degree recline angle. That is really specific. I, I don't think you need to go that specific, but... <laughs> your boss comes into your come comes into your office like with a measuring a degree measurer. He's like, "You have your your chair better be at one hundred and one hundred ten degrees, or you're fired." Or you're fired. Proper posture, man. But angled backward, uh, I I could see where it wouldn't be. You wouldn't want the ninety degree mark, um, because you do want to be comfortable, but you also do want to have decent posture. Yeah. So. And then there's me that's reclining in a chair that's just not, I'm just leaned forward and not at all using proper posture, so. <laughs> yeah, imagine using proper posture when you're sitting in a chair. Imagine. Yeah, imagine. Okay, uh, step five, make sure that your upper and lower back are supported. That's, again, a good tip because a lot of people have back, a lot of people can get back problems from not sitting in a chair properly. See, the chair I'm sitting on right now has, uh, Lower back support, but it doesn't have upper back support. Mm, that's a struggle. That, that, yeah, you, you gotta find a chair that's gonna uh, give you both your upper and your, it's gotta, you gotta find a chair that's gonna support you in life, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have a chair that's gonna support you in life. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I meant to be. Yeah, okay. Screw having a soulmate, you gotta have a chair mate, man. Imagine having armrests on the chair that you're sitting in right now. Uh, couldn't, couldn't be you. I mean, I have armrests, so it couldn't be you. <laughs> yep, not me. All right, oh, we're on to part two. Yay! Okay, sitting, sitting properly at the office or computer. Sit in an active chair if one is available. What, what are active what? chairs? It's sitting in an active si sit in an active sitting chair if one is available. Right? Active sitting chair. That, that seems like an oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Oh, oh, okay, I see. Like, it says 
underneath like standing desks, chair desks, kneeling chairs, and that force your body well, to hold. Standing desks is not a chair. Well, basically, I think what it's getting at is things that hold yeah. your body, like that yeah, force you to hold. It, yeah. Like, that force your body to hold something. I know a lot of people who have like standing desks. Yeah. And and they can like adjust it so they can sit or stand. And I yeah. I think that's awesome for a workplace for sure. Yeah, that's very smart for a workplace. Um and then passive sitting. Why why I they don't need an active or a passive sitting. Here. Honestly, that's just I think a little too far, but that's just me. You got to spend all your money on chairs. That's what I'm that's what I'm understanding here. There you go. Yes, exactly. Boss, I need a raise. Why? I need to buy more chairs. <laughs> Tuition. Just gotta buy the right chairs. PewDiePie's chair, three ninety nine. Okay, old joke. Okay, position your keyboard correctly. <laughs> Have you ever actually uh, been like sitting in a really weird position and typing in a weird position? It's so yeah. un. That's so uncomfortable. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh yeah. I I yeah. Keyboards. Be- keyboards are so difficult. To get in the right place, I feel like, yeah, where it's laying, not uncomfortable. Yeah, I'll be laying on my bed in my dorm room and, like, have it, like, on my, like, have my computer resting on my legs and then, like, trying to type and it just doesn't work. Yeah, like, the point of a laptop is that you can use it on your lap, but there's very few comfortable positions in which you can do so. Yeah, that's, that's a fair, that's very true, that's very true. Okay, step three. Adjust the monitor and source documents properly. Wow. The, again, they're, like, very specific with that picture. Yeah, they are very specific. Two to three inches. Of what? Below your seated eye level. Oh. Which, oh, I guess that makes okay. sense. I guess that makes sense, yeah. Because you don't want it directly, like, in front of you, but you, you want to, Yeah. Yeah, I think that's about what my computer is right now, so that actually, that, that checks <laughs> out. Mine's not, but, <laughs> whatever. Consider using an ergonomic mouse. An ergonomic mouse allows your wrist to remain parallel to your body. Oh, it's, natural. it's one of those, it's not like the trackpad that laptops have, it's like a legitimate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, my boyfriend uses that all the time, he uses that an actual mouse instead of the trackpad. Yeah, I'm using the trackpad right now simply because I don't have enough USB ports uh, for all my stuff I have plugged into my computer right now, but normally I do have a mouse. See, I don't normally. I just use the trackpad. I, I That's just what I'm used to. But Take periodic breaks every 30 to 60 minutes, and I love how it shows her going to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> like, why? I mean, I know that it is a break, but... The, the, not the greatest example. Yeah, like, you don't necessarily need to go to the bathroom every time you take a break, but, like... <laughs> your, co- your co-worker is like, do you have a bladder problem? <laughs> <laughs> just go over, um... Yeah, just, like, take a walk or something. Like, you don't just have to go to the bathroom or else people are going to judge you for that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and they give you stuff like do shoulder raises or shrugs, calf raises, lunges... Lunges yeah, not good in a dress. Time. Don't do lunges in a dress. No, yeah, yeah don't don't, do, don't that. do that. And then that could result in something else as well. I yeah, they could rip. Um. Okay. Next one. Stay as active as possible at work. If you That's work office, basically the same as five, but yeah, basically exactly. it's saying exercise while sitting at your computer, exercise your abs while mm-hmm. sitting. Um. What? See, I, I could see I see where they're coming from, but if you're in work clothes and you begin like working out like that, you're just gonna start sweating and you're gonna be disgusting. So yeah, that would not be good. Then, hmm, I would no. Okay. So honestly, I'm rating this an eight. I was gonna say it's I would up rate, there. I was gonna say it's pretty because it's all pretty good tips and stuff. I would yeah, I would say probably an eight as well. The title is just really deceiving. It throws you off. <laughs> How to title. sit like. <laughs> Do people need a wiki how article for how to sit? It's how to sit properly or with yes. good posture or like they needed more to the title than Yeah, they did. And um, it was it was medically reviewed, so like it's actually a good article. It's just yeah. it's just very deceiving on the title. Yeah. So the next one I think 
the next WikiHow article that we're going to get into is going to get us a little more serious. It's how to get rid of depression. Um, and the one that I was looking at is nine ways to get rid of depression. And so I'm just going to read the intro. Um, just a second. Is oh. I, I, I need to yeah read the intro and I'll see if I'm on the right one. Depression is a clinical condition just as real as a cold or a flu. The key to understanding whether someone has depression or a bad case of the blues is knowing the severity and frequency of the feelings or symptoms. Treatment for depression varies widely from person to person, but there are some approaches that seem to work more often than others. With the right treatments, you may be able to minimize the symptoms of depression and reduce the impact of depression on the quality of your life. So... I, I wonder if the article is going to get to it, but there's a difference between depression and just having a bad day, right? Yeah, so I, I wonder, I so. yeah, they're starting off with diagnosed depression. So yeah. you've been diagnosed. Oh my goodness. There are, hold on, I'm looking at, there are nine methods. Oh, geez. Um, let's just <laughs> start, do, let's just start and we can draw the line at any time because. Yeah, there, I think there's only like, uh, okay, maybe I was going to say there might not be that many steps, but there are. Okay, so the first method is diagnosing depression. Diagno um, yeah, you have to diagnose. And you know what? Why don't we just yeah. focus on method one? Because I think this is kind of... This is the basis of it, right? Yeah. yeah. Right, so step one is keep track of how you feel every day for two weeks. Okay. So, yeah. I, I, what is that going to show, I guess? is. I, be, I would say maybe move it to a month, not necessarily two weeks. I would say move it to probably a month because it's like, it says in the last point, like if you've, if you've gone through a major life event, like a death in a family or something like that, um, that might be the cause or something like you're you more data to, is always better is what you're saying. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, that makes sense. These symptoms and, may last two weeks or more and they may stop and come back again. They're called reoccurring episodes. Okay. See, yeah, I don't know much about this, so this is actually a learning experience for me. I was going to say, I don't, e I was gonna say, I don't either. Um, uh, yeah, the second point under that one is if you've undergone a major life event, such as death of family, you can exhibit mainly depressing symptoms, but not clinic, but not be clinically depressed. Right. Yeah, and so the difference between being clinically depressed and just mm -hmm. depressed, right? Right. Yeah, and I was going to say, like, it's also the difference between having a bad day mm -hmm. versus, yeah. Yeah. Pay uh, attention to other symptoms of depression. So, there's lots of them here. Loss of weight, bad sleep, fatigue. Yeah. Um, decrease in movement. You can either have e an increase or a decrease, I think is what it's getting at. Like... Well, increased agitation or decreased movement noticeable by others. Okay, yeah. Feeling worthless, excessive guilt, and having... I guess I was going to say, like, just because you have it after one day or two days or even a week doesn't mean it's necessarily, like, clinically... It's not considered clinically depressed. I think. I could be wrong, though. Yeah, that, that's why it's always better to just go to a doctor. Like, because yeah. when... One of the biggest problems, I think, especially over, like, quarantine and stuff, is mm -hmm. people are, go to their parents and, like, I think I'm depressed, and their parents always, like, brush it off. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I think if the kid says it, you should at least go get it checked out. I think, yeah, like, I would what, what does it hurt if they really are, you know? So, like, what mm -hmm. does it really, what does it really hurt to, exactly. to go get it checked out? Like, I don't, I don't know the process for that, but. Yeah. And um, therapy is always great, you know? Like, yeah. It, I just, I think if, if it's even being said, it should be yeah. checked out. You're kind of getting on the third one, a little, the third step a little bit, which this one takes it a little more drastic where it says get help immediately if there are thoughts of suicide. But I think it's... Yeah, well, there's not, it's not always going to be, like, suicidal, but definitely if you're, yeah, having thoughts of suicide, getting help immediately is definitely the best option you don't want to hold up on that yeah um step four is distinguishing between the d depression and the blues so yeah like that's that's between... what we are talking about when yeah. you just you you know yourself you have to know whether you're just having a bad day or whether you are you think you're actually right yeah. yeah 
And all of us have bad days somewhere in our lifetime. If you don't, good for you. And if you haven't yet, you are probably going to encounter. If you if you day. aren't, you are in heaven. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Write down the activities you've done in the last weeks. Kind of the same as the first one. Mm-hmm. I guess making sure, like tracking, like what you've been doing, because if you. I guess if you're going out and hanging out with people and, like, actually having a fun time, like, I don't think then you're depressed. You just had a bad day somewhere in there, so. Yeah. Ask if others have noticed a difference in your mood. Yeah, I think, I feel like, I feel like the people around you should a lot of times be able to tell you kind of what you're thinking. Kind of. Yeah. Like, they'll they'll be able to tell if they think something's wrong. So, trusting the people that you trust is definitely something... Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, I was going to say, and even if you don't necessarily notice something in yourself, the people around you are going to notice it, and be, they might even come up to you and be like, hey, are you doing okay, or like, yeah, yeah. the people around you are big in that. Um, and then the last step for diagnosing is ask your doctor if your physical condition contributes to depression. Yeah, so again, that's going to the go get help, go get a professional opinion. No, I think this is, I think this is talking about something a little bit different. So it's like if you are going through like something that's related to a certain part of your body, like if you're like it says in here, like thyroid or if you're certain medical conditions, especially terminal or chronic conditions can carry a risk for depressive symptoms. So I think it's this one is touching more on if you're going through something physical, like your body is going through something physical and it might contribute to depression. Right. Yeah. So I we'll sk- I think we're gonna skip the seek professional help and stuff like that because that's kind of it's it's kind of just a repeat of the diagnosing. Yeah. Like it just goes into more detail. So this I I this is a good article. It's it's a ten. For I sure. would rate it probably. I mean, we didn't go through it, so I would probably rate it a nine out of ten just because we didn't go through it. Yeah, all. we didn't go through it all, but it the, this whenever you're talking about topics like this, it's definitely good to. Yeah, it's just a good topic. So I and I it seems to have really have thought out. Thought yeah. out things. So, yeah, definitely a good article. All right, what's the next one? Um. Well, let's. We're gonna move on to something a little more lighter and a little more fun. So how to eat, and there's oh, two no. things that came up. We can pick. It's. Uh, I mean, there's how to eat properly or uh. how to eat fast. So How do you eat properly? I, mean. I don't. I don't care about eating fast. I already eat fast as it is. Okay, so I'll read the intro again. So, how do you eat properly? There's so much information available about how to eat properly, and it can be overwhelming. While you may have heard all kinds of things about what foods to eat and which ones to avoid, there are some simple rules that can help you to make the right food choices. Start by making your diet includes healthy foods and beverages. Then work on adjusting your eating habits, such as cooking, such as by cooking for yourself, reading labels, and making healthy swaps. You may also benefit from adjusting the timing of your meals and snacks. Yeah, I definitely don't eat properly then. <laughs> my my, I just eat when I'm hungry, dude. <laughs> it's just, the it's just the way it is. If I'm hungry, I'll have a cookie. Like, it's just the way to yeah. Adjust your eating habits is method one. How many? Me- oh my word! This is a long There's article three too. Methods so I think we'll be okay to go through all the methods. So. so adjust your eating habits. Swap unhealthy foods for a healthier version. So like instead of chips and dip, have chips and dip. So what? instead of like having, well, instead of like having the salty chips or like having like really unhealthy chips, oh. like carrot ki- chips or something that's going to be healthier. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Or like instead of having like, um, <clears throat> like what it says, instead of having like a high fat guacamole dip have a lower fat yogurt dip yeah like Um, yeah yeah get into the habit of reading labels i you know what i would do this for breakfast like when i was sitting at my house when i was still at home i would do this at breakfast i would look at the nutrition label just because i had nothing else to do no yeah like you pour your cereal and then you just set it in front of you and you start reading the nutrition facts for no reason yeah i've I've definitely done that I was going to say, I'm glad I'm not the only one that did that. But sometimes there's, like, games on the back. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah. <laughs> I'll also do those. Yes. Anyway. 
And I'll look at sometimes, like, okay, so my dad was diagnosed with diabetes uh, when I was in sixth grade. And so I'll look at the carbs now and be like, how many carbs does one serving of this have? And be like, how much sugar am I actually getting in my breakfast? <laughs> See, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't need to watch that because I just can't gain weight to save my life. Well, same, but it's like I'm just looking, look at it and be like, how many grams of sugar am I getting and how much sugar am I getting to start my day off? <laughs> Number three says measure your food to ensure that you're getting reasonable proportions. I don't know. This almost seems like a weight loss wiki how article instead of like a... Honestly. To, but like, yeah, I don't know. I think there's a point to that though. Like for people like... I don't necessarily measure the food I'm eating, but it's also, like, I know how much I can and can't eat, so it's, like, I'll take, like, I'll get the amount of, like, I'll only have the certain amount of, like, I'll, wow, words are hard. I'll have the portion size that I feel that I'm going to eat and I'm going to need for that day. Does that make sense? Yeah. Number four is keep unhealthy items out of your environment, so if you're tempted to want to snack on them just don't even buy them in the first place is basically what yeah, they're saying. Yeah, but we're college students and we need the snack. <laughs> yeah, I I if I'm hungry, I just eat a cookie. I have cookies in my dorm and I just Jacob was stealing them the other day my roommate and I was like, "You hungry?" and he's like, "A little bit." And he Do normally doesn't the, eat outside of dinner, the, so do you get the ones from the commons, like the wrapped ones? Yeah, yeah. I oh. yeah, I grab one on my way out, and then I'll eat the it sugar later cookies, that night. Why are the, the sugar cookies are so good, and I don't know why. Yeah, they're soft. They're so good. They had, they had these uh, cookies in the commons the other day, and they had frosting in the middle of them. Really? Yeah, they were really hey. soft, and they were really gooey, and they are really good, and I don't, I, I don't understand. I didn't pay attention to that, but. <laughs> okay, Number use five. Mine. Yeah, number use, five. Use mindful eating strategies to eat less and enjoy your food more. What? That goes the opposite of eating your food fast, is which the other article we were yeah. tempted to read. See, it says so it takes you around 20 minutes to eat. I think for a normal meal, it takes me about a half an hour to eat. I can be done in 15 minutes if I need to. I was going to say, I can be done earlier. It, it just depends on the food. Like, if I'm cutting it all the time, then it takes me a little longer. But if it's, like, noodles it, or something. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Um, and, and it also depends what I'm doing, too. I, I don't know where I heard chew this. Chew slowly. And... Go yeah, on, sorry. I was going to say, going with the chew slowly like, on here. I don't know where you're seeing that. Oh, yeah, chew slowly to save for each mouthful. I heard you have to chew, like, 32 times or something. Yeah. Like, that seems a little much, but also, if you do that, apparently you're maximizing the amount of vitamins and minerals and stuff that you're pulling out of the food because your stomach is better able to digest it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's just what I've heard. Work with a therapist to control emotional eating. (laughs) Emotional eating? Is that a problem? Oh. um. (laughs) It actually, well, it actually legitimately is, I think. It is a problem like when I'm upset or something, I'll just eat. Yeah, I do that too. It's just, yeah, I I don't know. I do it when I'm bored. I'll eat when I'm bored. <laughs> Same. Like I think that's the biggest thing. It's like I'm bored, so like I'm just gonna eat a cookie. <laughs> like there's I no know. reason for me to. It's just I want a cookie. <laughs> because you don't know what else to do, so you're just gonna eat because it's something to do. Yeah. So let's just read the methods. Um not maybe not get specifically yeah. into what they say just method two is choosing healthy foods and healthy drinks food. and then timing your meals and snacks um Ooh. i guess yeah like for this one learning when you need to eat and like how far between you should eat but then like i have a decently high metabolism so i have to eat about every hour hour and a half two hours in order to keep my stomach full but that's just me I mean, you don't always need to keep your stomach full either. That's that's I guess that, that's, kind of the thing. That's true. It's like that's it says each eat eat your meals and snacks at regular intervals during the day. So like you should be consistent on when you eat is what it's that, saying basically. Yeah. All right, and then we we have one more wiki hat. Well, do we want to rate this one first? Yeah. Um. What would you rate it? Because I'm I'm kind of on the fence on my answer. I would kind of rate it probably. 
probably a six to a seven somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because it's like I get that you want to do all these things to keep yourself like healthy and stuff, but it's like we're not trying to necessarily be quote unquote healthy. Like we're not going on a diet, so it's like I think <laughs> it's it comes down to we know our body, I guess. Yeah. And we know what we can handle, so. Yeah. And, like, as college students, we can probably take in more sweets and more snacky things than... Stuff. Yeah, exactly. I think it, it, it also depends on age. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so then the last one that we have to go um, through is... We'll end on a, a lighthearted one and a funny one, I think, is how to cheat on a test. How to what? How to cheat on a test. Wow, why is this a wiki article in the first place? Oh my word. Alright, so you it's can read a, the intro. Yeah, I was gonna say, there's only four steps. Well, kind of. There's, oh my gosh, okay, there's four methods, never mind. But anyway, so how to cheat on a test. Whether you are simply unprepared, lazy, or otherwise unable to successfully pass an exam, you may feel compelled to use cheating as a strategy to get through a test. Here are some steps and tips to help you accomplish your goal and most likely get you that A-plus you've always wanted. Well, time to teach some sin to some children. <laughs> Here's the thing. is I honestly think, like, if you're really that desperate, there has to have been something else going on than you just being lazy or unproductive. I think there has to be some other outside source or something that... Yeah, going on in most your likely you're not stupid, you're just lazy. <laughs> Honestly, that's really what I think it comes down to. Yeah. So, I think let's just do those first two steps, because honestly, the other ones are just methods of doing it, so there's just two, like, first steps that kind of... Decide which it. type of cheating is going to be beneficial for you. Oh Will you use God. the cheat sheet, the partner the part cheating, or hard to prove? Huh. Well, okay, here's the thing. I know when we just recently took um, our history exam yeah. in our history class, yep. we had to, like, we had to roll up our sleeves. We couldn't have anything written on our arms or our hands. We had to, like, take, we had to leave our phones and our watches, like, our smartwatches in the front. And I think that was just a good way to push it to, like, actually study, like, hey, we can't cheat or we can't look at something, you know? Yeah, not that I was going to cheat anyway, so it was just right. kind of a pain in the butt for me. It's just... Well, right, same, but, like, it's just, I think it's a good, because he's had in the past where, like, people have done that, so I think it's just a good way to prevent anyone from cheating, so... Yeah, people are very, very, I want to say smart about how they cheat. Like, if you're putting yeah. that much effort into cheating, just go... Just go, basically at that point, just go study. Like Just go study, yeah. And then step two. Don't, don't get, get caught. caught. What? No it way. I, I thought that wouldn't be on this list. Cheating only helps if you can get away with this. <laughs> don't look suspicious. Don't aim too high. And dispose of the evidence. Oh, my God. <laughs> dispose of the evidence. I love that. <laughs> so method one is using the cheat sheet methods. Start by gathering information you will need. Write down on print the information correctly. You don't want to give yourself bad information. Copy it Copy down. Copy it down and hide, hide the, the sheet. sheet. See, I, <laughs> I can see where maybe that would be beneficial. Like, it shows a calculator. I can see where that would be beneficial maybe for a math, math test. test. But, like, when it, where are you going to hide? Else are you going to hide the sheet? Try the body part sh cheat sheet method. Huh. The... Implement. Or your upper thigh if you're a woman? Excuse me. <laughs> nah, at that point, just put it in your bra. Isn't that, isn't that, a, isn't that a thing? Well, I mean, I guess, I think it says writing it on your thigh. But why would you, why would you? Why would you do that? How, and how would you see that information? How is that not sus? Mm, I don't know. Um, well, I mean, I guess, mm, I don't know. Try the water bottle cheat sheet method where you put it on the... Oh, Okay, oh, one, I see what you're seeing here. Yeah. I see I see where that one could be beneficial, but also, like, why would you do that in the first place anyway? <laughs> but. Tr oh, another calculate. I like the calculator method. If you if you have a, uh, a math test and mm. you put some 
numbers in your history, I could I see where that would actually be beneficial. I don't yeah, know. Would that to... really be considered? I guess that's kind of cheating. It would be cheating, but also I think um, I think it would be cheating to a certain extent, though, only because it... I think I think that's just really smart. I don't think I think that would be cheating to a certain extent. Like, yeah, you do. Like, you know what I mean? I think it's only. Yeah, I've never thought about that, but that's actually a really genius. Mm-hmm. Not that I'm, I'm not taking any math classes, and yeah, and calculators either. only help to a certain extent as well with some facts, math problems. So right, yeah. that that just depends on what kind of math you're doing. Right, and then implementing it, partner cheating methods. What? Try the peak partner method. Peaking partner. Oh, oh make I sure. You, well, that's not. That's just sus. That picture just in and of itself looks very sus. But I see what it's saying where it's like you either, you can like, you like talk to the person that you're either sitting next to or that's in front of you and be like, hey, can you like lean a certain direction so I can cheat off you? Like that kind of thing. I see where that's getting at, but why would you do that in the first place? Honestly, like this whole article is just going to be, why did you do this in the first place? <laughs> Number two place? is actually really smart. Using sign language to Yo. indicate what, what number it is. That's actually huh. really smart. <laughs> Like if if it. you're if you're just sitting there writing and you have your hand on your test, hand on your pencil, you can just very subtly just like sign language. That's we're That's giving people kind of, bad ideas. Why are we? Why are we? Even yeah, reading? why are we doing? That? But I mean, to a certain extent, that would probably be if you. Not that you would want to cheat on a test, but if you're looking for a really slick way to cheat, that would. That's be a definitely one way. of them. Using hard to prove methods. What? Try getting the instructor's edition of the version of your textbook. Okay. Hmm. That works. Okay, try, I guess that's Try true. getting an advanced slash old copy of the test. Oh, like sometimes that. teachers release that though, like Yeah. Like this yeah, this is know. this is gonna be the exact test what it's gonna be like for you guys. But yeah. they're gonna be different problems or whatever. Here's the so, thing like, is I've done like I've asked people like I've asked to see people like people in a grade above me I've like asked them like hey what did this test look like or that kind of thing like I've done that before I don't yeah I that I think that's only cheating if you're not if the teacher tells you you're not allowed to I guess because yeah. like they're not, to a certain extent some teachers yeah. use their old tests to help people study try the comeback later method yo. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. <laughs> Some. Uh, why would a teacher allow that, though? Well, I could see where, like, if you act like you're going to be sick, or, like, if all of a sudden, like, you know? Okay, claim to be sick, go to the bathroom towards the end of the exam until it's over. And then, That's yeah. cheap. That's so cheap. <laughs> Try the bring your pencil method. As you turn in your exam, if your professor isn't at their desk, use a pencil you brought with you to change or write answers from the test on the top of the pile. What? (laughs) This is high risk. Keep in mind that some classrooms have cameras. Okay. I just that you're gonna get caught. You're honestly gonna get caught. Don't use that method. Do not use that method. And then try the fake exam paper method. Knowing the exact format of an exam paper will help will help with this, so you can write down all the important points on a paper that looks exactly like Here's the, the thing, exam. Is I think teachers just do that because they want to help students. Like they don't give the problems, but I think they give you kind of what is going to be like the format of the test is going to be, don't they? Yeah, I I guess I I don't I guess I don't know. Trying to cheat. Step one, try not to cram information last minute. Well, you shouldn't do that anyway. I was going to say, you shouldn't do that anyway. Um, and then step two, start studying earlier and more effectively for the next test. So that's how not to cheat, is just if you do those two steps, you shouldn't need to cheat in the first place. Exactly, exactly. All right, well, that was the last article. How would you rate it? Um, I would honestly, well, I Honestly, why would you want to cheat in the first place? So I'm going to give it like a three or a four. I'm giving the end part 
a solid seven, but I'm giving the rest of the article a solid four. Yeah, I would, yeah, I'll, actually, I'll give the solid, I'll give the last part of it, honestly, a solid eight. Yeah. Just like, because it's good tips to do. Like, it doesn't give you every single tip that you can do, but it gives you a pretty, it gives you two really good tips to do, so. Yeah. So that is it for reading some WikiHow articles and dissing on them. The last ones we really, the last one we dissed on in, like, a not funny way, and yeah, this, this has just been fun. So if you guys have any articles you want me and some friends to review, I hope to do this again with different people and just kind of go around uh, the board and just see what people find funny on WikiHow or find serious and actually want to talk about. Um, so if you like this, make sure you share this, like it, whatever else. Make sure, yeah, you're just subscribed so you can see more content. Kayla, thank you for joining me today. Um, Thank you for having me. Yeah, this has been great. Um, I, I liked the idea of reading WikiHow articles. You came up with it. So hopefully we can continue to do similar stuff like this as well uh, with yeah. other people. So thank you for joining me. Uh, when life gives you lemons, read a WikiHow article. They know how to fix your problems. <laughs>